Continuing on the presentation and uh, very interesting topic raised by Samuel, uh, I can start by saying feng shui a little bit. Taipei 101 is right here. It's right here. This one. We were the tallest building in the world for five years. It's hard to maintain that title nowadays. Like every one and a half year, you are taking out that, the top one, the tallest one. So we were there for five years. But the beginning, it was shaped or incorporated certain element of feng shui in a very general sense. So it's bamboo shape. And if you come visit me, us, actually we have a delegation of five people here. So I will introduce them to you a little bit later. If you come visit me, us, uh, I will show you the hidden turtle, all right? It's not everywhere visible. You have to be at certain spot. And the turtle would be getting coins, golden ones, falling from the building. So quite, quite a lot of uh, feng shui element there. But I can also prove that Samuel is right. Every tenant moving into our building would consider feng shui element seriously. But how do we make, maintain a balance? All right, you want your feng shui, you want to become prosper, pro, prosperous in your business, but we want the building, the whole building to be green, sustainable. So there is certain thing that we need to maintain the balance. Today, it's more like a case study. It's more like experience sharing. It's about a long journey. It's not going to end soon because since you are taking the challenge of lead V4 operation management, it means it goes on forever. Every five years, it's a cycle. It's a life cycle of moving into the future. It's unlike the new construction concept. A lot of super tall building has been and will be certified by LEED program. But once you accept the challenge, operation and management, this will become a totally different journey and story. So as I just said, we were over five, uh, five years and a couple of months, we were the tallest building in the world. And in 2011, we went for the certification of LEED Platinum. And with that, we become the tallest green, green building in the world. So as you can imagine in Chinese, in Taiwan, in Hong Kong, we love to be the top one. We love to be number one, all right? But how about maintaining that status? So five years later, we are not going to be the tallest green building in the world because there are new buildings constructed with lead, with green building in mind. So we need to strike a higher standard. So that's why we move into the second level uh, after five years. We don't just get recertified. We ask the certification institution, which is USGBC, give me the harder challenge, give me the higher bar. What are them? And they told us it's V4, a higher standard, more technical and more social. Are you up to that challenge? We said yes. So we were certified this Ju July. Uh, so I'll show you some of the event that we, ha we had. Now, over the years, of course, we were lucky. For five years, you were the tallest building in the world. So a lot of attention was paid to Taipei 101. I just want to point to the last one, the more, more recent one. Last year, we were tagged by Popular Me Mechanic Me Magazine as the toughest building on Earth. How do we get that kind of you know, recognition award? Come visit us. It's highly possible during your visit, you would experience the earthquake. And it's highly possible that you would be with us embracing the hurricane, the typhoon. Uh, City BOH chairman, David Mellop, he was with us in July, and he knew what typhoon did to us. It shaked the building, it shook the building to a large extent. Then normally earthquake did. But we survived and we also stand strong, tall there. So we were attacked by popular mechanics. It's hard to 
describe in physical, in, in, in this kind of, uh, in word. You have to be in the building to understand it. So come visit us. Now, uh, today's focus will be more on the office tower. Uh, we are multi-purpose complex. We do have a shopping mall. So during the break, I was walking around, you know, checking out different brands because that's part of my responsibility. We also manage a shopping mall. And of course, we have the observatory deck. Uh, as Samuel just mentioned, it's quite popular. Uh, for sure, we are grade A or A plus, depend, depending on your terminology, uh, office building. Uh, occupancy rate right now is around 97, 98%. But if you are interested, you can talk to our people, still small places. <clears throat> the traffic, uh, Samuel mentioned uh, Burj Khalifa at a single time frame. We are managing this traffic all around different time. Uh, there are 13,000 people uh, registered as tenant in the, in the office. Uh, normally, 8,000 showed up. I don't know where the rest, 5,000 people, I think they went for, go, go, go for some other business. But we do have like 4,000 visitors coming to the building for business relationship. So that's a lot. And also on a typical day, we receive 7,000 tourists up to the 89, 80, 88th floors observatory deck. So a lot of traffic. When Taipei 101 was built, completed, we were not, in the very beginning, we were not green building minded. So uh, it's, it's quite a challenge to go for green building. But at the very beginning, there are certain features coherent with the lead concept. So here are several of them. I think you, uh, in, in your property, in your management, I think you, you probably have similar things. We typically take pride in the final one because the energy man management and control system for us is the core of the management. It's down at the uh, basement. It's a secret hideout. Uh, we have 24-7 uh, monitor all, all kinds of situation. We have over uh, 100,000 sensors put out through the building to monitor every situation. Over the year, as you know, fire safety has to be more uh, according, you know, correspond to the stricter rule and regulation. Uh, as Samuel just mentioned, terrorist concern, we, we didn't get any of those, but you know, you need to be prepared. And also energy saving, which is a big component of the LEED program. So the system is improving, is evolving. We have a lot of partnership with different supplier, uh, big company around the globe. Right now, we are also in this cloud-based uh, computing world. So a lot of our data is uploaded to a, a uh, cloud-based system. And there, we can, be, uh, we can be comparing to other tall building similar property for the performance. So a lot of exciting things are happening, even though we are 12 years old. You know, in, in Chinese culture, 12, 12 is like a full circle. So we need to renew ourselves in terms of the outside image, also the inside management. Okay, why do we go for lead? Again, uh, we want to be known, used to be the tallest one. Now we want to be, we wanted to be the greenest. Now what, what's next? So over time, we, we, we are finding it's more like the right investment, the right innovation, the right technology has strong basis built upon sustainability is the right way to go. So on the hard set of uh, investment, I think that's the right path for building, getting aged, getting older, getting mature like Taipei 101, it's the right path to go. Also on the soft skill set, side, to connect with lead program, the whole organization structure, the management team, the executive branches has to change as well. So you need to communicate on the right 
category and subject and all the staff need to be uh, uh, trained in a certain way to, to acquire new knowledge in a certain way. So that also improved our soft set, set of management skill. And uh, as Samuel rightfully put, it's a community kind of thing. It's not just a piece of property. It's not just about packaging it into a portfolio so that it can be traded on the marketplace to increase the value of the uh, uh, equity holder. It's more than that, it's a community. It means you need to communicate and connect with people in it, surrounding it, uh, use all kinds of facility uh, related to it. So it's, it's more than that. Now, some of you are expert in LEED. Uh, probably you are certified LEED AP but I still want to talk about it's getting harder and harder. So in 2011, we, we were certified platinum with V3, uh, the older level. Now, coming to last year, uh, last year and also to be certi recertified this year, V4 raised the bar much higher. Uh, first, a uh, major difference is that the prerequisite increase from nine uh, set or category into 12. It means you need to be qualified on 12 different items and used to be nine. And this gives you zero credit. And if we maintain the same level of sustainability management, we would only receive 40 credit compared to 2009 standard. Uh, uh, naturally, we can uh, support, be supported with of uh, 54 credit. So the next slide will show you the detail, the breakdown of everything. The main component of LEE program is of course energy saving, uh, water uh, conservation, uh, waste recycling, uh, indoor air quality, uh, some other innovation, uh, and also community building, and also green effort, not just in the building, but also in, 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 a, in a more societal context. So I think I, I will have some other slide explaining that. Uh, very happy to announce we were certified with 90 credit points, the highest according to USGBC. So I'm happy we are number one in terms of credit, number, score, all right? It's typical Chinese. Now, uh, LEED V4 is very different from the previous one. Uh, the way we interact, or sometimes we argue with USGBC, is also very different. Uh, the green certification, the LEED program, uh, normally are certified by a panel of experts. And a lot of experts in that panel, in that committee, may not understand how we function in a super tall building. So one of the items that we communicate heavily and quite angrily with USGBC is daylight view. If you were in our building, I think Samuel was in our building, they have an office in Taipei 101. There's no problem with daylight view. We have the best daylight view in Taipei, in Taiwan, yet we were not allowed to claim that credit. So we, we communicate with the panel, we provide evidence, we measure according to the physical uh, feature of Taipei 101. I think USGBC evolved as well. So as a member in the super tall community in City View Edge, I think we, we have a cause to communicate with USGBC and other uh, institutions who are recognized tall building in certain way, energy saving, uh, a green effort, all these kind of thing. Okay. Uh, the last one is, again, the hard set. Uh, to win the credit from LEED program, we need to install a lot of meters. And it's act actually very helpful for energy saving, for monitoring purpose, for water conservation. But again, uh, I want to say operation and management is much harder than the new construction. So I welcome all of you representing different uh, property. Join us to conquer this OM, Operation and Managing uh, Green Building Certification. 
So you must know the handsome gentleman on my left hand side is David Mellot. So he was with us to get the taste of the typhoon. And on my right hand side is uh, chairman of USGBC. Uh, he, he didn't know quite big the impact the typhoon would be. So he didn't stay overnight for the whole typhoon experience. David was brave enough. He stayed. Uh, on the softer side, on the soft skill that we developed over this lead program, the lead story, the lead journey, I think environmentally we achieved certain good things. Uh, not just for us, energy saving is also, good, of course, a good thing. But also we know where we are at this long process of uh, climate change uh, endeavor. So we establish the, bench, uh, the, the baseline, then we improve over time. Uh, we listen to our partner. Today we have many partners. Uh, our, our people, our delegation would be going to your booth and ask you very specific question. How can you make Taipei 101 more energy conserving, safer, and things like that? So uh, there would be more challenging environment, higher regulation, surrounding different society, different market, but we are right there. So we are coping with the uh, sustainability, the environmental goal. The other side of the story is, as I just mentioned, the whole management style, the structure has to change accordingly. And also, uh, over the year, the board has a difficulty to come to consensus. What is the main focus of Taipei 101's corporate social responsibility? Some of you need to issue CSR report. Uh, in Taiwan, if you are a public traded company, you need to report CSR. We are not really required to report, but we have published for three years, and we are getting good at it. And we know there is no debate nowadays in the board meeting. This is the main focus, to be sustainable, to run a building like this, to communicate with the community. This is the main focus of our CSR effort. Okay, some of you are a number expert. You need to see the number to believe it. So uh, over from 2007, which we have more accurate uh, uh, record, to 2015, uh, energy usage index was reduced by 25%. And keep in mind, the tenancy rate increased over those years. So it means we replaced a lot of light bulbs, we, we uh, ask people to commute by public transportation. We have smarter system uh, controlling the lighting, uh, and also air condition, that kind of thing. Uh, we have a cooler slide, but not in this presentation. As, we, uh, as a bamboo-shaped building, we have the balcony to collect rainwater. So uh, the rainwater would be 100% used in uh, landscape irrigation. So this fits nicely with not just the lead program requirement, but also for uh, a, a place like Taiwan, because we, sometimes we get too much rain. Sometimes we didn't have enough rain. So the rain collection system really helped. Now this is, if you come visit us, again, I sincerely invite you. All the friends from CTVUH are very welcome here. Uh, I can take you to some fun place, like the top floor, the 101's floor, the secret place, not open to public, even with ticket, we are not selling ticket. So you have to come and contact me and contact our people. But this would be the place I love to show you. Our recycling program is categorized, separated into 25 different bins. You just cannot misplay anything. So check on every feature of the waste, and they are separated into 25 very carefully uh, 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 processed uh, recycling bin. I think some of the uh, building has this technology, but I want to point out to you 
the recycling rate is up from the previous uh, certification of LEED. Now it's at 77%. We are going after every bag of waste. So, you know, tenants sometimes don't like us because we will ask them, recycle, 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 what's in your bag? All right, so we are uh, promoting recycling effort. Public transportation, we are lucky we have a metro line connect to the building, so public transportation takes 86%. Uh, LEAP program for us is not a one-time event, not just celebrating the big plaque, but also a constant effort. So we have seminar, we have a green corner, very dedicated one. We receive over a thousand uh, people. This year, since we are certified by LEAP V4, we are quite busy, uh, a lot of visiting group. And we have a newsletter constantly promoting all these right concepts. Okay, this is one of my newest baby. We have an app available on iOS and your Android phone. So download Taipei 101 Green Building. It's a cute app. As you can see, the cover page is Green Leaf. And once you get into it, you know, sometimes you have a hard time explaining explaining to people what, what's LEED about. There are six major categories, and now we are giving them new light. They are Chinese calligraphy incorporated into this app. Cute one, download it, and send me feedback. So I will send you a souvenir, a nicely packaged one. Or you can come to Taipei 101 to pick it up, all right? Do download this one for me. So we start trying to be a green leader. We turn out to be CSR, community leader. And the performance improved dramatically. And now we are known in the marketplace, not just in local contact, we want to be known in a global contact. So we uh, achieve higher market leadership. And now a lot of uh, partners want to join force with us, so we achieve the event leadership. So it's a positive, good thing kind of cycle. Better use other people's word to describe how they feel living working in Taiwan 我觉得安全的进出的管控非常重要我觉得伊林一大楼除了非常好的一方面是我们每一个人同人都有我们的识别证所以进出到了非常自由方便除了这个以外我们还有知道伊林一大楼有每天都有保全员巡逻不同的
，或者是有电信公司的这个服务，然后或者是药妆店跟呃这个这个便利商店，其实都让大家在生活上都非常方便。我想这栋大楼里面有非常多的这个呃特约的这个餐厅，其实对我们这个服务产业来说，其实我在这里面常很多时候需要跟客户、跟我的同仁在不同的地方。去在比较轻松的场合去用餐，它都有一些特殊的一些呃菜单，或甚至有一些特殊的一个优惠。我想对我们租户来说是非常方便的一件事情。它常定期办一些静态的或是动态的不同的活动，联谊租户之间彼此的一个感情。那很重要一个点，比如说像一楼的这个这个艺廊，就让我们在工作呃很闲暇的时候，可以到一楼这边去放松，然后增加一些艺术的一些飨宴。那很重要一个地方是，常也会办一些公益的活动。那这些公益的活动其实是让我们一方面可以回馈社会，一方面我们在这栋大楼里头，其实大家租户彼此之间一起共同，通过活动的参与，互相的一个了解。那像呃登高的活动啦、啊，或者是呃这个烟火的活动，我想也是让我们在成为这边的一份子的时候，其实心里面都感觉到很喜欢去参加各种不同的类型的一个活动。它不只是一个办公大楼或是一个生活的空间。它是一个大家是在一个社区里面一个大家庭的感觉，这点我觉得很棒。They will be here the next few days. So the final words, the motto for this whole case is we like to uh, do the following. Doing good by going green. Keep on going. Thank you.